hi there everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cold Dunes here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today we're actually going to be diving into the new set finally. hey -o. Hey! It's out. It's there. It's it's not fair at all. <laughs> yeah. I have heard it's a great limited set. It's extremely fun limited set. And hopefully I'll be able to definitely show you all that soon enough. I'm not sure. Probably already have if you've seen this a little bit later. But anyways, before we get into it, I'm going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it. And the link will be down below. And today's deck is called Menace to Society. And that's literally it is. It's the new, I think, badass uh, menace creatures out there. Especially the rare that we'll talk about. And then the uncommon that makes it where your dudes are pretty much unblockable for sure. But I don't know. We'll just get we'll just get into it. Yeah. Just don't block. Don't block. Yeah, don't don't you don't get to block. Yeah. And the first one, of course, is the Dread Malkin. It's a one black, one one. I completely forgot about the zombie cat. It has menace as well. Everything has menace, so but just in case they try to kill one of your creatures, you can pay two and tap, sacrifice another creature or planeswalker, put two one one counters on Dread Malkin, and then it's a three three menace for one which is pretty good yeah dread malkin totally good yes all right the labyrinth raptor he yes. is a red and a black for a 2-2 nightmare dinosaur and he has got menace and whenever a creature you control with menace becomes blocked defending players sacrifices creature block yes you, hit. you pay red and a black and menace creatures get plus one plus up so this dude's really really good for the sole fact that once you do block with two dudes because of menace one of those dudes dies, so your dude probably just, doesn't die. Yeah. Because it's before combat damage is dealt, so you're like, cool, block, and you're like, cool, sacrifice one of those dudes. Thanks. Yes. And then the other dude's dead. Thanks. It's super good. Yeah, this guy is ridiculously powerful. And the fact that you can, like, I was going to say Frost Breath, just fire breathe your whole team. Yeah, pretty pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. The next one is Stormfist Crusader. It's a red and a black 2-2. Two -two. has minutes. Beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and you lose a life. And that's just for you to keep card advantage while you're just plopping dudes down. Yeah, card advantage and kind of bleed for them. Yeah, exactly. Next up is the Grim Dancer. It is yeah. black, black, and one for a three-three nightmare. When it enters the battlefield, your it enters the battlefield with your choice of two different counters among it: menace, death touch, and life link. So this is pretty good just because it gives you options. You're probably always going to pick menace. Yep. But you can get either death touch to kill a dude or to kill multiple dudes or life link if you need to for sure. Uh, the death touch part is like you have to block with two dudes they're both dying because i have death touch which is i think is just a, a i don't know if i played against this i would be crying every time if i had yeah, no kill spell a little ridiculous yeah and the art's one of the coolest arts in the set for sure uh next one is hunted nightmare it's a one and two red it's a nightmare of course it's a four five for three has menace but enters the battlefield Target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. Now this seems like a downfall. I've never seen it really be a true downfall because then you just kill the creature with a with death touch counter on it. That or you just make sure they only have one creature and you just swing for four. Yeah, because your death touch dude can't block if you can't block. Yep, exactly. Menace is a thing. It's super good. Next up is the Pestilent Spirit. It is a black and two for a three two menace death touch and instance and sorcery spells you control have death touch. Yeah. So you're like, cool, kill that dude. Yeah, shock, shock that big dude, it's dead. Thanks. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh yeah. All right, this one, Sonoroas Howlbonder. It's a one and then two hybrid of Rakto, so red, black, red, black. Two, two menace, and he makes this overpowered. Yeah. Each creature you control with menace can be blocked except by three or more creatures. Yeah. <sighs> and he curves oh. out from the raptor and it's kind of <laughs> gross, because you're like, raptor turn two, you lose dudes, this dude turn three, now you go block three dudes, yep. and you still lose one dude. And then by turn four, hopefully, if you have four mana, then you get pumped twice, and you're swinging, what, uh, eight damage with menace, and they better have six creatures to block your dudes. Yeah. yeah, it's... Dude gets wild. Yeah, gets insanely crazy awesome. Uh, the first spell we got, like you said earlier, is shock, because it's one red kill, shoot something for two, Yeah, creature or player, and it's an instant. And having it death touch just to be like, hey, Kill your, two, kill your six six with two damage because yeah, it can because it has that touch. It's super strong. Oh yeah, and because we're playing black red uh, and you want cheap kills and grass wrath, uh, choose one. It's a sorcery, sadly. Sacrifice an artifact, creature, or planeswalker, and that player most of the time you can just be like sacrifice that creature that can't. Now they can't block at all. Yeah. Oh, you have two dudes. That sucks. Bye. Just get rid of one. 
Next is Bedevil. Again, you're killing the dudes. Whether you put the discard, the, the counter on them or whatnot. But Bedevil is a two black and a red for an instant. Destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. Seems so, good. Kills whatever you need it to. And if they if you get it, that death touch that gives a death touch to your opponent, you're just like, oh, kill that dude. Yeah. Thanks. And then, uh, of course, it has to do. I have to try this. It's called the Death Dweller. It's a tune black sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards and convert mana cost total of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch and a counter on them and a menace counter. Of course, they're all gonna have menace, but to have put it on death touch as well. And that's why the the cat, the one drop cat, is mostly in here because then you can get this and then your two drop raptor and give one of them death touch. And then that's still amazing. Yeah, it's it's pretty strong. Just because most of your deck costs under three. Yeah. You're going to be able to get it back. Yeah. That or if they kill your three drop that makes a three uh, dudes that have to block, then you just bring him back. Yeah. It's awesome. Now with that, that is completely like tight lip deck uh, with all of that. And of course the lands are basically, well, you, we already have. So we have the Blood Crypt, which is the black red. We have uh, both castles of Embreath and the Lock Lane. Uh, they have the special ability, so the red one, of course, pumps your dudes, and the black one be able to draw you a card, and then you take damage equal to how many cards you have, which will probably be zero or one when you draw it. And then the mountain swaps, and then the Temple of Malice, because I don't want to use it. I might switch it to Fable Passages, but it's there. It's still a dual land. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's kind of rough being like, hey, my dude, this is, comes into play tapped, it's still a dual land. Yeah, especially since there's a lot of black red, like just the mana cost itself, then you gotta do mm -hmm. it. Now, of course, uh, we have honorable mentions. We don't really have a sideboard because we don't know what the... Well, there's no local meta anymore, sadly <laughs> enough, but the meta that you might be playing against on Arena. So, we just have some cards that you can put on there to see if we can have some fun or might be better. Uh, the first one I really want to try is Fiend Artisan. He's a hybrid of Golgari, but you'll be, it's two black essentially in this deck. He's a 1 1. He gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature in your graveyard, which if you play against a uh, control deck, it'll happen. And then you can pay a black X and tap it. Sacrifice another creature. Set your library for a creature card with converted man, cost X or less, put it in the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this only if you can cast a sorcerer. So on your first main phase, you want to sacrifice the cat to go get the dinosaur do it like just who cares you know then you can you're able to get what utility creature you need at the time to win the game that's what i would think about this game. yeah anything like that that lets you search and get a card into play is really really strong <laughs> yeah, for cheap too like yeah, i think that's it's real super cheap. easy another good one you have for sideboard is easy prey and it is a black and one for an instant destroy target creature with career mana cost two or less and it's got cycling two yeah. So if you have it in your hand late game and you don't need to kill a dude, you can just draw a card for the same mana. Yeah. Or you can be like, I need that dude out of my life. Kill him. Don't block. Yeah. One of the two meta decks I've seen online is either the black blue dude Kraken that basically gets dudes from the graveyard or the either Mardu or just black white or black red deck with the Panther cost three. He's a companion. So basically he says you can only have two or less in the deck so this is easily just to be able mm -hmm. to kill everything that that they have in the deck because they're putting out with the sacrifice cat and uh which oven and stuff i'm just tired of it and then because it defeats both of those decks in an instant leyline of the void it's two and two black enchantment i don't know why i have not seen this at all being played but if it's in your opening hand you may begin with it on the battlefield and if a card would put in your opponent's graveyard from anywhere exile it just that's how you win yeah. like on arena if you play best of ones then you put this on the main deck for sure just to plop it down and you win against those two high meta decks yeah no leyline of the void is so strong just because it says you don't get to have a graveyard so yeah. any of your shenanigans that you want to do you don't get to yeah sorry opponent you don't get to do any of that and but you still get to have a graveyard that's the best part yeah with that uh, that is the deck i think it's really strong and fun i can't wait to put it together on arena and play it for y'all uh, but with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island, and you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above 
uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.